So, hello and welcome to today's Woodworking Wisdom. I'm Jason Bridge. Today, we're going to look at a Christmas bauble. It's near Christmas time, so if you're watching this in January, I'm sorry, okay? But it's near Christmas. So, as a decoration, something a little bit different. Um, keepsake type bauble. A memory one, maybe. Or maybe you've got a little bit of jewellery that you want to give to that girlfriend. Oh, something like that could be interesting. So, the bauble we've got. Something like this. The idea really being the fact that you can open it up and there might be something inside. So hopefully that looks pretty good. Just looking at Matt here is just checking the sound. So guys, if you've got any problems, let us know. We'd love to know. So we've got our little ball ball. We can close it. All right. Quite simple, isn't it? Beautiful. So we can open it up and then you can have something inside. So Matt, you can have sweet look. That'll keep them occupied for an hour now. All right. So Quite simple little project, all right? Uh, let's move those out of the way. You'll understand where we're heading in a minute. So we're going to start a piece of ash. Ideally, you want something as an open grain wood if we're going to put a bit of colour in. We're going to show you how we can do the colour. So this is, and someone's going to ask, so let's have a quick go from memory. It is three and a half inches long or 90 millimetres by roughly 70, so two and three quarter inches square. Okay. So from there, let's find our middle. I've already got pencil lines marked out just to give me a rough guide. With the dividers, can use those. We have Pro Drive up in here. Tail stop, let's bring that up. Tail stop ring center. Bring that back. So we're locking off the tail stop before we bring the barrel up. Make sure it's nice done there. Check the other end because I moved things earlier. That's loaded. Get that robust rust in, a bit more clearance in there. Let's check it all go. Play by speed. First thing, real simple thing. We're just going to come down to a straight cylinder. Ooh, roughening gouge. Let's have one of those. So, handle down low. Just the bevel. Turn it up. Nicely back and forward. Zip the smog cap before I go home with the wood siding. Oh, oh my fire. That's good. Lose that. Feeding tool. Let's have a quick look on where we are. We can come in with the tool rest a little bit. We can bring it up a little bit. I want a five of size. What have we got there? That's not bad. So my calipers I've set up. We need to do a bit like doing a normal box. Something either end to hold in the chuck. I want the grain to continue. Nearly. That's probably enough. Okay, so whilst I've got a bit more access to it, just looking at what we've got. I know the diameter is a little bit bigger at this stage. I'm just going to put a divide line in now. 30. We could come up probably a little bit more than that. Let's go to there. Look. Be better to have a bit more material and take it off and not have enough. Okay. That gives us our blank. Oops, a real simple thing. So I've got 30 mil from the edge of my spigot, turning up to there. That's going to be my divide line. Then the other bit's a bit longer. Now, have a logical thing. Let's go through this as well while we're here. It'll be good to do it. Or we can put it in the chuck and show you. Knock out bar. Back on there. It's not home, Jason. Get so used to having my knockout bar in underneath the headstock. That's why I've just gone to get it from. It's not in there. I panic then. It's like, where have I left it? 
we've got our blank we know that's ready scrap block if i just put this in this is just going to give you an idea of how i can make a template so my template i want a circular disc to put inside to measure it so all i've done this is 45 mil diameter hole in the middle so i start with a square i drill a hole in the center get a washer head type screw a craig type screw or a pocket hole jig screw screw it on I can screw it all the way in. That will fix the piece of plywood to the main block. That allows me to turn that nice and accurately and quickly down to that diameter. I can also then put a line across. Now I've actually got a line with either side of, and I think I've probably come up or I've got come in. Thanks, Matt. That's why I couldn't find it. I've got two pencil lines that give me an idea of the thickness of the middle of the hinge. Okay. So whilst we're looking at that, let's explain the hinge. So the hinge bit we're going to use, one of these decorative gold-plated hinges. The middle bit, you get a face edge on here, one the other side. If you measure it, it's three mil thick. And there. Overall, the hinge is 10 mil from side to side. So three mil in the center. So I've tried to accommodate that on my template to give me where I need to be halfway from my wooden bit. It's not the center point. It's set one and a half mil either side of the hole. Okay, that's simple. So we can make our template, which we've just got, a bit of plywood. We're going to do a bit in there. We want parting tools, something thinner. Let's go with that. Nice and close. Left foot outside the headstock. We want to cut on the outside or far side of that line. as far as you feel safe let's go to there okay so we can cut that off this gives us our first bit we've got to do the inside with next thing oh let's take that center out a bit safer i won't catch my elbow on it few things I've set up kind of ready to go. Skew chisel, going to find the middle. We need depth gauges there. I also want to scribe a line out. So let's just reach for a template. So I've set the dividers up. From the centre hole, I can put a scribe line. That gives me a guide of our diameter we want. Keep the template there for a second. We need a depth. So V, and again, with box making skills, I've set the depth gauge up. Now on there, just short of that, that halfway. So I'm actually aiming more for that pencil line I've set about. Into the middle, got to come up fractionally. We want to drill. Almost like I say, a depth hole is a guide. little bit so lining that up with the lathe axis bulk gouge quarter inch gonna be on its side so flute facing me nine and a half ten o'clock center outwards gently come out this is taking the bulk out nice and quick just trying to look at the camera and see where I'm putting my left elbow my right elbow, so don't block you guys. Okay, we're taking the bulk out. At the moment, I've got a little bit of a V shape. Turn it over, flute face in the middle this time. Going to swing round. Clean our shape up. Got our gouge out the way for a second now. Now we need to start to get in with our template. I've got to come out in diameter a little bit more. I expect we go overhead. You can see I've still got my hole. I can see where I'm touching. I'm touching on the beginning of the opening. My magic scraper. So, 
we've said we're touching there so let's do that bit first take a little bit that's going to allow it to open up check our fit a little bit more on the front So almost pattern making now, obviously we're trying to work to a size, a shape. Nice and controlled, beautiful shaving coming off. Fingertips, what's happening feels better. Okay, now actually we're pretty good there. A little bit take off midsection, if you like, out in here. Don't want anything off the middle. I'm going to drop it in a little bit more as my aim. Tiny bit to go, but we're getting good. Do you need to be this fussy with the shape? I can see that going to be one of the sort of questions that you all sat there at home going, is that really that critical? Maybe not with this. I kind of have a view if you're going to make it. Might as well make it properly. I've got boxes that actually I do exactly the same way using this as a template, and I've got to be spot on. It really does show later. So this box probably not going to hurt. I'm giving you that scope of how we're running that through. That's good. Fingertips, how's that feel? Still got a little drop in the middle I'm chasing. Feels better as a shape. Trying to get my template so it'll match. Definitely being quite light on a refinement into the center. Bring it out through. That should be good. So the centre cut there, I've gone in, wiggled it up and down slightly. That'll fit quite nicely. Now I'm just down to my hole. Let's flip it over. I've got those two pencil lines. I want to skim a tiny little bit off the front. Get that square and bring it back to that depth we need. Again, using that scraper. That's going to resist or stop the fibres inside that we've just cut collapsing. We push over with a bowl gouge, they will collapse in, cause more issues. This way the cut is coming straight down on to that cutting edge. Okay, good. I reckon that one's all right. So let's take that up to here. Got to sand that. going to sand it now because we put heat in and then we can do the hinge fit. Just turning the extractor on. We've moved the banjo out the way. We've dropped the speed down. We're down to 750. That's good. Keep it moving. Tighten that little white dot we get in the middle. Pull it out. Let's have a quick look. It's not bad. Two, four. Quite a bit of paper here, so we're going to fold it, make it smaller. Both hands working. Left hand supporting the right, adding a bit more stability. Keep things moving. Good. 400. All right, good. So first bit done. Still got a few other things to do to this whilst it's in the chuck. One of them, let's polish the inside. So quick coat of cellulose sealer. So we brushed on, wipe it off. 
get rid of that excess that seals it then want something as some wax to put inside so i've got some micro crystal wax let's have a little bit a bit of web wax which is synthetic steel wool put that on there Uh, setting up now to do fit that hinge bit. So uh, let's have a quick look. Is that per calipers? They look a bit small. So what do I set those for? Let's double check them then. So how can we set these up? Tricky to do because you've got to work inside the recess on the hinge. I'm just bringing these out so they're just tight. I prefer it to be just over. That's good. And here, I'm going to set that up. They match. That's good. We need a depth now of about, and this is where you get about. And here, I can measure that. Check on here. Now, I've got that pencil line just as a little mark on here when I put on earlier. That's just beyond that. So that's good. I can lay the chisel on and position it before I start the lay. We want that. Turn it over. Gonna have a quick check. Right, then you're back in, see where we are. It's kind of a bit short, so I can use the side edge of the free eight beading parting tool. Bring it down. I think I've got a bit to go, yeah. I can do a quick check with the calipers. So that's showing I've got a lot of material, yeah. I'll be getting nearer. Okay. Check our faces square on there. Let's bring our hinge up into play now. Some of you are kind of saying, would you not? Yep, we're going to get that up on. I want to get this to fit nicely. When we're doing this as a nice fit compared to maybe a box lid quite small, quite short in length. Okay, I'm going to do, let's see what we've got on here. It make my life easier. Guys, I've done demos with teaching bits. They know a bit of white paper is fantastic for this. So let me see it, focus a bit better. Might even show better for you guys at home, look. So again, we've done a side swipe cut, nearly going on there. That's good. Now, let's deal with the other problem. The other problem is the hinge. And I've got excess material, diameter wise. So I can't push this on fully. The little bow on the hinge or the lock clasp, if you like, will restrict it. I could turn it that way. Okay, we're not bad there. Tiny little bit in the corner. So just change into my skew, clean out that very back edge. That's good. Now we want our diameter that we were just on about, so I'm going to do that now. Speed back up, handle down low. Get in there now. There we are, down to that. Okay. That'll give me a bit more access now. We can check exactly how that fits. I'm trying to look inside it as well to make sure we're back enough. We're not bad though. The diameter we've taken down now is level with the outside of the metal. So that's quite important. Okay. That bit done. Clean bit of blue paper towel, but you want to take that wax off. 
So I'll do a quick bath on there. That'll polish that up nicely. Gives us a good shine. Ooh, okay. Have a bit of wood. So now I've got to repeat that process. So maybe let's chat on this bit then. Find the middle. Guideline. That pole. Bulk removal. Fingertips, see what's going on. Uh, here, a little bit open on the front. We've got excess material, so let's lose a bit. And I know I'm a bit deep. That was almost fun, though. Better. Okay, shape's pretty good. Need to come back for our pencil line. I'm just hitting the hole a little bit. That's better, so I'm back to that guideline we said about. Quick feel of my fingertips. That's not bad. So I'll wipe it off. Oh, turn the air off, it'll dry things rapidly. 
Alles gut. Ein bisschen Wax. You can leave the wax just to settle for a second. Remember which are the two pairs of calipers we're using. That's better as a guide for a second. So this is aiming at the moment now for the overall diameter. Then we need to do our hinge. Three mils quite small, I've got to get that in. More to go. Close. So nice and gently with the beading tool, just stroke across that face. Got a little lump in the corner I need to get that fits on. Skew chisel, just refine that corner edge. Tight, tight, but if don't actually no wiggle, which is good. Two should look the same, pretty good. We need to clean the wax. That looks good, okay. And there, I need. The vernier it's over here. I want 27 millimeters for what I'm doing there. I'd have to do some maths earlier and work out where I need to be. So 27 is there. What do I need to work out in the maths for this? Where's the diameter? It's 56, so I'd call it a little bit over. Uh, give me a little bit of material to take off. Minus the thickness of the hinge in the middle, we said three. And then there's the cover bit either side that we've just cut that recess for. That's one half ready to go. Now we could actually, let's keep going with that cut for a minute. It'll save me a bit of time. So I hope my maths is any good now. Come back, get a bit more. Gonna swap to thin parking tool. So this is the top. I've taken that off. So I've got my length set now for where I need to be. Thickness up to the top here. This is going to be the hanging bit. Have a one. Let's have a quick look because they need to be the same. Okay, that's easy enough. Now I've got a couple of options. Which way do I want to go with this and hold it? Let's have a quick look, see what's close. 
Uh, what we've already made. So I've got that. Oh, we could go with this. The only problem with this, this is going to move it off center, actually. It's a little bit big. So when I did prototype one, I have to figure out ways of holding this. So I've got split ring, I've done a piece of ash, a bit like we've taken out the chuck, cut a recess. That's a little bit too big on the pinch. I could take it, put it back in the chuck and take a little bit more out. The advantage with that, we can open and close it. This is just a piece of pine. I've done a weird thing on here. It's got a hole down the center. I can use that hole maybe if we need it. You can see the red on this. This is uh, what we've used previously to do. Won't quite fit, and I'm not surprised. This has been sat in my room for a few weeks now, so I expect it's dried out a little bit. Let's take a tiny bit off the front. I'm going to swing my light round just for a second. I want to get into here now, make sure I can see it, using the side edge of my skew. Just feeling what's going on. Not got a lot of thickness there, but it's a good guide of where I need to be. Dress in the front. That needs to fit. That was easy. Declutter. Yeah, Matt, I'll lose it. All right, I'll go that side. He's looking at me pulling funny faces over here, isn't it? All right, can we see you because of the light? I could do my star prep compression we did earlier. Okay. The light band. Okay, so now we've got to shape this. I bought the tailstock up at this stage just to add a bit more security. I've got to go careful because I don't want to burn that lip and catch it to pull it out. I did one of these when we were playing around practicing and I managed to spit it out here down the extraction chute with the extractor running. Um, so go a little bit careful with that. So bow girl on its side. This is taking material length off. We know this needs to be 27. Turn our diameter down. Using our gauge again. Back up to that wall, we've got to come down to where the material thickness is. That smaller diameter. So bow gauge, flute, about two o'clock. Left thumb pushing round, handles travelling. And we're after half a ball shape. Better. A little bit flat, maybe. I need to take a bit off the edge. I think here we can bring that back out the way now. Nibble this off. Want this totally gone. Unless you want a fender or something on the bottom. Shape-wise, just looking, I've got a little bit of a flat on the top here. Doesn't quite run round right. So let's bring that in. Just got to refine that shape now. And this is a visual thing, if you like. So I know I've got a bit to come off here. So I'm changing to my skew. Going to shear scrape, just refine that down. So we're holding the skew about 45 degree angle. I've got a micro burr on the top edge. That feels quite good. Bring it round. And again, fingertips, really good guide of what's happening on this. Drop it down, middle. That's quite nice. Shake flows quite well there. That's good. Now I've got this thing now. 
ช้อนแก่ได้แล้วนอกแคลปะนอกล้อเลยนะแล้วคลายแวบที่ก็มอยอะไปไวแต่มันชิดว่ามีกบเลยชิดชิวเองเลยชักเคนู้ it's the fact I'm right down on the edge now to make sure you don't damage what you've just made I've got that bit of tissue up inside there oh chap him out good oh. fingertips what's going on is it feel right constant thickness that's what we're trying to get have a feel I'm just going to put it back onto our hinge to check it clears the bow which we know we took the diameter down I don't know if we can get a quick picture and tell it where right there holds on there That doesn't look bad. That is good. And I'll tell you, do you bet you're making half, less than half a ball because you're accounting for this 10 mil band in the middle? Takes a bit of concentration of looking at what shape you're getting. Okay, you've got to take that into account. So one half done. We can put them back in. He says, <coughs> clips in there. Well, let's put our tissue back inside again. So I'm going to have to get them out again. Want to sand it, and then we got to repeat this again in a sec with the other half. So I'll gently pull around. This is the one fifty. That is good. Pulls the tool work together. Two forties that one. That was good. Going to do four hundred in a second. So this stage, wire brush, brass bristled. Okay. And this bit's optional. You don't have to. You might want totally natural wood look. Now ash works brilliantly for this. It's going to brush out that softer spring growth, which is in between basically the growth bands. If you look at it on ash, each annual ring there's a spring growth and then a longer bit. The spring growth will highlight with actually the the grain fibers. I suppose more is the best way of describing that to those rings. Working round, trying to make sure I get it all. Get there. Now we're going to add our colour. Let's get it open, and then just looking for the brush that's there. So what we're using house paint. You can have whatever colour you like. It's just the fact I've got red, so all of these have been red so far. You could go with a liming wax if you like. Brush it in. Wipe it along. Now you can see why my bit of pine was red. Trying to fill all those grain pores. That looks good. Put that back out the way. We need to wipe off the excess. Now it's going to dry quite quick in here at the moment, so that's not a bad thing. See what's going on there. Okay, 400, that's the two four, that's the one five, must be the last bit, 400, just going to go turn the air on, oh, reach around the light, then we're going to sand that back. 
I'm trying to monitor the colour as I'm standing. I can see I've got a darker bit up on that end. Bam there. Got a quick look. That's not too bad. My uniform there. I can drag it up a little bit. Just in there. Okay. So one part. I think let's have a quick look on so our camera we can see our colour. That's quite good. Doesn't hide, hide that grain structure. You can still see it through that. Other bit we did, got to do exactly the same. I've also got to allow for a little stub on the end for a minute. Again, side reason I said before, we can bring that up. I've got a tiny stub on the end here. Need to lose it. Bring that up. Not too much pressure. The ring center will just stop it popping out at this stage. Take the speed up. Got to start on that corner. Come round. Change my body stance and bring the tail stock or the banjo in just a little bit. We can reduce that stub down a bit now. Now we're looking at not too bad. I reckon I go to my refinement. I've got a line tail stock end, which you guys will see on camera too, a little bit. Little mark in here we're gonna get. I've got a little bit towards the top that to me looks out of shape. So again, just really refining that shape. I'm looking down almost above it. I'm gonna get half a ball shape. A little bit flat towards the middle, so let's get that curve coming round. We've got to bring this round. Quick visual check. Using this skew like this, shear scraping. More control, really nice, light, fluffy type shaving. Have a quick look. I'm going to bring the two halves together. A bit over on diameter, so I can bring that down. That's still good. I'm trying to make it look more ball shaped now. I've just said, just from a quick visual, this is over. The other side I checked, a little bit big here. We need to bring that down. That's where we're aiming for there. Have a quick look again now. Better, more rounded. I almost haven't taken a step back and go, okay, a little bit towards the top. Again, important to get my fingers in what's happening here. A little bit thicker there. So that goes with what I've just said. A bit off the top. How's that fit? That's quite good.
bit there. Oh, this refinement thing can make it look good. Lots of little checks can be important. I've got this fanny bit on the top. We've got to use it. So now we play the magic game on the desk over here. Where did I put it? I've got it. The drill bit. We need this in a second. So I want to make something the same size as this. Let's measure the shank back a little bit. That's good. Over the top. So this is six mil. That's good. Uh, not on the back, which would go with what I'm looking at. Okay. That's not too bad. So let's for a second. Now at this stage, I can sound it. But you've seen how you sound in colour. We'll have a look in a minute. We'll see where we get to time. We've got our stub. I think, mate, if you look at two, comes together. It looks a bit out of place now, but it's one bit's coloured and one's not. All right, so we've got our ball shape, the stub. Let's show you what we're going to do with that stub for a second. We can always finish this off in a second if we get time, but have that little thing I've got to keep an eye on the clock over here. So, move that over. We're just trying to change the chuck. I want a different set of jewels. Now on the top of here, I think we go to the overhead. I said about the string bars. Now so on here, I've got a little collar and a decorative piece of wood, different color, that covers where my string threads through and just makes it look a bit nicer. So we've got to make that bit. So you want something as a contrasting material. Uh, this, I think, is some of Colwyn's duck food, no? No? Okay, it's what he made his ducks out of, the little stem bits, all right? So this is some of that English walnut. So I've got a hole in the end already, so we need to lose that and clean that up. What we got? That's a bit heavy, but it'll work. I want to get that back to split. That's not bad. Then we want a little skew. Create a V in the middle. Drop the speed down. Bring the tail stock up. Drill bit. Oh, to check where things are. I've got a bit more lighting. Just want to make sure that looks good. And again, if you've got swing head live, this is so important. So we moved the headstock about. I had problems the other week when I was trying to set this up because I hadn't checked it and I couldn't drill on centre. That swing head. So I've had to make sure of a line it and make sure it'll go in nicely. If I need to, I can still adjust my six mil hole. Ooh, a little bit off on the bit of ash, which is why, really, I wanted to put it aside. Bit of walnut's quite an easy one. Skewed shit, it'll be easier if I had a bit more of it, but... Advantage with those spigot jewels, lots of room to get my hand in here, that expanding pin chuck. Uh, lots of room in here. This uh, is so sort of tricky to get into for something small that looks good as a size this is straight gonna come back the other way straighten that up 
Значи къде е? Next little thing you gotta want something is a round file. Is it what I wanna do? File across there. Make a little half round, isn't it? One. Okay, that'll create our cap idea. Pencils is on the bench. That's coming down to there now. Okay. So we've done a little half round. So there's only four. I'm going to part this off nice and gently. So fingertips fetch over. There it goes. Clean up the top. Quick change of the chuck again. Lose the light. There's our half we're dealing with. Little cap we've just done is there. It'll fit on so far, not all the way. That's quite fragile as a little cap. We split the fibers of it if we push it on, it's too tight. So good to do this at this stage. That'll fit on. Might be a little bit long. Dish sander. You can do everything with a dish sander. Okay. Next thing we want to do here, got to drill a hole across it. So, two mil drill. So, we've got our hole all the way. Flat file. This is one of those Japanese files that I like. I can get my hand up there. just to create a flat down level with where the hole is. So when the string goes through and then the collar's on, the string's got room to come up through that top. All right, so this at this point, you would have done, hopefully your colouring, you would sand this, get it coloured. All right, you've seen how we've done that first half. String to hang it. All right have real problems with this, trying to, I can't thread a hole now, not, not, with, not with this end anyway, but super glue is an amazing thing, dip the string in the super glue, roll it between your fingers, harden this end up, so that gives me something now that I can embarrass myself on, there you go, collar, and this is easier to do on the lathe as well, through there, through that one, if I can poke them down through, Hang it up. Down there. Give it a pull. All right, so we know that. We can tie this off. We'll get our other half as well. We would have coloured. When you come to put it together, and I'll get the one we finished in a minute. Something is an epoxy. You can glue the gold ring on, secure it. So a little bit of glue in here or on the lip. Doesn't matter, but you don't want lots. Put it on, line up the grain. You can have the grain lined up, and I'll do it with the coloured base. You can probably see it better on there. It'll come up a bit. If I did the white, which we need to colour, really, make sure it matches up. It'll look nice. That liming effect works really well. Now, before you glue, what do you polish with? At the moment, we've left it in the white. I've gone with a spray lacquer. All right? So an acrylic lacquer will work really well. So before I glue it, I leave those, and I even did them on the bottom of the tin with the waxing, upside down, just spray the surface. Let it dry, then you can glue them together. All right, that gives you something. Let's get the one we've got that's complete. Oh, something a little bit different. Something we can open out, 
Right, I say, you could put pictures of your loved ones in here, all right? Um, Christmas is always about a time of family and everything else. Uh, there's pictures that I'd love to put in here. People I can't bring back that are important to me at Christmas, they could go in. You might have that little bit of jewellery that you want to hang. Oh, that's sweet like Matt had. All right. And then you can hang it on your tree. All right. So something just a little bit different. Matt, I don't know if you've got any questions. You've been really quiet. You're now scanning your computer and working up for I know you're trying to set that sweet for all that time and not eat too many. He's now going to put his mic on. I thought we'd better answer some questions and see what we've got. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, there's a question about why is there not a handle on one of the skews? On my skew? Just because it's lighter, okay? Um, the first one I ever had, and actually we've got a good video coming out just after Christmas, in between Christmas and New Year, looking at my three chisels. So, that, so the skew is one. The round nose swiper one, adding the square end. But this is about being lighter to hold, more delicate. I'm treating it quite lightly. The minute I put a handle on, first of all, it extends the length. It becomes heavier. It wants to drag it down. Also, to do the recess cuts, a bit like we did here for the box lid, if you like. If it's got a longer handle, it's actually got to pass across my body more. I tend to have to swing, and I don't get a straight. By being shorter, nice and gentle less movement in my hands, so that's really important. These are slightly thicker than a standard oval skew. It's steadier, okay? Only sharp on one end. So it comes with the sharp bed, has an asymmetric grind, so it's curved underneath, hollow on the top. Again, we've done that in the video coming out where we're going to show you how to sharpen. Don't go sharpening this end, because it sits under your wrist. It's a little bit, bit problematic. If you want to sharpen the other end, you need to make somebody go over it as a cover. All right, and I've seen a couple of guys around the world I know that have made, you know, they've done something that we ought to fit into. But I love the fact it's quite light and delicate to hold. So that's the reason there's no handle. All right. Is that it? Is that all you got? It's the week before Christmas, I get one question? Ah, oh, come on. So how are we all? So let's go then, but I think we're pretty much done. So where are we now? What is it, Thursday? Since Thursday, Tuesday next week, Calvin's got... We're working with them on second part of the birds, I think. And then next Thursday, I've got circle cut jig on the bandsaw. So if you're a wood turner, everybody needs to cut bowl blanks. Going to show you a simple way of making a circle cut jig. So we've got that. In between Christmas and New Year, I've just said I've got video using my skew, my round nose striper, and the square one up on the wall. Show you how you use them. A bit of info and the sharpening. A bit more in-depth than we've done before. So there, there. All right. Hope you've enjoyed today. Give us a thumbs up. Thank you all very much for watching. Bye then. See you soon.